There's one more act in this place, Louise Holbrook. Please welcome to the stage, Louise Holbrook! Keep it going! I'm quite laid back. <laughs> so I'm always amazed how dramatic people seem to get about their own jobs. I work in an office. Anyone else work in an office? I'm assuming that's either sarcastic enthusiasm <laughs> <laughs> or just complete sarcasm without even working in an office. For those who don't, what it basically means is I'm surrounded by a huge number of colleagues who genuinely believe that unimportant things are crucial. <laughs> I said to one guy, can I get some detail on that account? I've got to make a phone call. Is it urgent? It's admin. <laughs> In what situation could that ever be urgent? <laughs> but everything has to seem frantic. Everyone's desperate to appear manically busy. There's no longer time in the modern workplace to get a coffee. Way too slovenly. You have to grab a coffee. <laughs> Emails don't get sent, they get fired off. <laughs> you can't even go to a meeting anymore. You dash to a meeting. <laughs> and if you really want to convey importance, you've got a meeting that you need to dive into. I was in a meeting that someone referred to diving into. I thought, I wonder what that actually looks like. Exactly the same as when they go to a meeting, just with preceding ego. <laughs> Very occasionally, I get to witness the ultimate gold star performance. Someone clutching an iPad will run the full length of the office. We report on data. <laughs> Where are you running to? <laughs> and holiday time's peak season for self-importance. I'm not here next week. Is there anything you need from me? I've got so much to hand over before I go. You haven't. Just leave it. <laughs> it will still be here when you get back. <laughs> Your seven days in Spain won't single-handedly bring down a global company. <laughs> Whilst I appreciate that these reports don't write themselves, <laughs> I'm pretty sure we can battle on for a week without the HR dashboard. And all this drama seems to combine with the competitive stressing. It seems at times that people actually want to be able to claim the most stress. Oh no, you're stressed, how come? Oh, I've got a project deadline this week, it's just not leaving me much time free. You're not really stressed then, are you? <laughs> you're paid to do eight hours a day and you've got eight hours to do a day. <laughs> It's not stress, that's employment. <laughs> well, there's the opposite approach. Oh, I started at seven yesterday morning, didn't finish till nine at night, same the day before and the day before that. So your eight hour day is continually taking you 14 hours. <laughs> that's not stress, that's incompetence. <laughs> And some people seem to thrive on making themselves busy. The woman I work with will send me an email. As the email arrives, so does she. <laughs> to tell me, just sent you an email. <laughs> she then proceeds to read it out loud to me from my screen. <laughs> like an office audio book. Could have saved yourself a bit of time there, Janet. If you'd opted for either a visit or an email, wouldn't be quite so busy. 
But there's always that danger that freeing up time allows for more unnecessary conversation. Now, I have a naturally miserable face. I think we can all agree. <laughs> if it's not in use, it looks like thunder. I'd hope that would be enough to deter any pointless chat. But apparently not. <laughs> the worst are those who have nothing to say but tell me anyway. The one that claims to be crazy busy, yet still thinks my day will be enhanced by having a detailed rundown of last night's lasagna. <laughs> and the fact that her child ate a yoghurt. <laughs> and a child had a bath, like it does every night. I mean, to be fair to her, when she joined, she tried to seem more interesting by giving herself a nickname. Hi, I'm Rachel, but you can call me Pixie. <laughs> Why? <laughs> You're the only Rachel in the whole company. We don't need to. And Pixie sounds quite fun, which proved not to be the case when the daily updates of the bedtime routine started. <laughs> they never really stopped. There's quite a lot of child talk at work. Well, there's actually quite a lot of child talk outside of work as well, because I've now hit that point where friends have either got young kids, or as they feel compelled to tell me, are trying for a baby. <laughs> oh, right, you're just having unprotected sex then. <laughs> I don't really need to know that. I suppose if I wanted to, I could retrospectively work it out in a few months' time when you start avoiding pâté and mayonnaise and any hint of fun. <laughs> I don't like children. <laughs> For the same reason that I'm not a huge fan of ornaments, I just don't like things that don't serve a purpose. And parents, God, they brag about ridiculous things. <laughs> oh, Henry never fails to amaze us. The latest thing is that he loves olives. <laughs> as if it's the benchmark of refinement. <laughs> still a four-year-old. No matter how maturely he eats, he'll still wipe snot on your sofa. <laughs> oh, he's very bright, very clever. Well, he's clearly not, is he? He can't even do his own coat up. <laughs> and he's learning French at nursery. Shouldn't they focus on zips and buttons before the <laughs> second language? And then as they get older, oh, he's getting really entertaining now. He's very funny. He's not. <laughs> it's just you spent the last five years with him, so you've lost all concept of humour. Just because he's no longer soiling himself doesn't mean he's witty. <laughs> he's brought his basic hygiene levels up to the same standard as everyone else's. That's, that's not charisma. <laughs> and one of my friends has already completely forgotten what it's like to be child-free. So she expects sympathy for things that just don't matter. She was fretting that her child might not pass its next development phase because although it can sit up, it can't wave. <laughs> why would you fret about that? And if you did fret about that, why on earth would you tell me? <laughs> can't wave? Well, I've never met an adult that can't wave, so I'm sure they'll crack it eventually. <laughs> Could it do a thumbs up in the meantime if it's a problem? <laughs> Whatever happens, please fight the urge to ever give me an update. <laughs> but then this is the same friend who previously asked me to vote for it in a baby model competition. Oh. Now I'm sure it will develop more of a face. <laughs> Currently, it just looks like every generic baby. It's quite greasy, a bit cross-eyed, essentially featureless. <laughs> Certainly nothing to be voting for. <laughs> Someone at work last week said, oh, Jane's had a baby, we're still waiting for a photo. We're not, Sarah sent one last year, we could just use that.
I've now got that feeling of dread that at some point in the next few weeks, Jane will bring the baby into the office for the show and tell. It's all right, Jane, we believe you. I'm sure there's somewhere more interesting for a baby to be than an office. It's just a weird world and it creates behaviours and reactions that would never exist in real life. We get fruit delivered to work. When the box of fruit arrives, an audible wave of excitement spreads across the floor. This is fruit. We work opposite a shop. But for some reason in the office, this delivery is a highlight. And for those few people who are lucky enough to get one of the rare bananas, well, it takes them all their strength not to hold it aloft in a victory stance as they head back to their desk. They manage to walk calmly, but inside they feel like they've won the lottery. <laughs> if I invited a friend round and they brought fruit instead of wine, <laughs> that's just too hypothetical. We'd never be friends. <laughs> I'm Lucy. You've been great. Thank you. <laughs>